This is another great example of our inflammation algorithm. You take a normal organ, like a gallbladder, which this is, by the way, because it has a lot of connective tissue. It has this little band of smooth muscle, and it has a mucosa, which is generally fairly uniform, fairly columnar, but may form little papilla like this, which is classical for gallbladder. You take this gallbladder, you throw in a bunch of lymphocytes, and you have your diagnosis of chronic cholecystitis. If you had thrown in neutrophils rather than lymphocytes, you got another diagnosis of acute cholecystitis. Notice these chronic inflammatory cells are most dense throughout the mucosa. In some areas, they form uh, secondary uh, lymphoid nodules. In some areas, they are diffuse. And this area looks kind of like a primary nodule because I don't see a germinal center. Notice that they are associated with some hemorrhage underneath the uh, a smooth muscle layer. Also notice that there is significant disruption of this smooth muscle layer. So if this was significantly more disrupted and or acutely inflamed or necrotic, you could expect perhaps some uh, weakening of the integrity of this wall, which represents a, a big risk factor for perforation which would cause peritonitis. Also notice, we use the gallbladder in histology lab to be the prime example of a simple columnar epithelium because it lines up so nicely. It has the nuclei at the base. It has that nice little uh, border on top. This is classical textbook columnar epithelium, but it happens to be overlying a mucosa or part of a mucosa that's uh, chronically inflamed as is the muscular layers. Chronic cholecystitis. Uh, another little tip, chronic cholecystitis and gallstones go together like uh, bread and butter. Each one predisposes to the other uh, in every way. So when you think chronic cholecystitis, think that uh, it could uh, give rise to stones if you see stones know that they're very highly associated with secondary inflammation as well. Thank you very much.